In this video, we're going to be going over the proof of a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle and where those rules come from. So if you're in a traditional geometry class, you have probably seen a triangle that looks something like this. And then you have these random weird rules, X, X root three and two X. And you know that, okay, well, this is 30 degrees and this is 60 degrees and this is 90. And then you're thinking, okay, well, one, why does this rule even exist? And then where do these values come from? So I hope to shed a little bit of light on that in this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our little triangle here and I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to say, okay, here's the goal. Here's what we're trying to get to. Now, let's start with a basic equilateral triangle. So here's what we'll do. We'll go around and we'll say an equilateral triangle has three angles that are 60 degrees and all of my legs are the exact same length. Well, I need to think, okay, well, how am I going to create a 30 degree angle? Well, let's do this. Let's come in and let's drop what is called a perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to come in here and then I'll just do a dotted line straight down. And what we're really doing is taking this equilateral triangle and we're cutting it in half. So what is convenient about a perpendicular bisector is that it cuts not only the side in half, but the angle it intersects. It also cuts it in half. So now this 60 degree angle becomes a 30 degree angle. This 60 degree angle didn't change. And now we have a right angle. Now let's look and see which side did not change at all. And that would be this side here with X, this hypotenuse, because this length here just got cut in half. So we know that this bottom is going to be X divided by two. This hypotenuse did not change. So it's still X. And now we're left with this long leg here and we're like, okay, well, what's that going to be? And how do I find that? Well, you know this little theorem that deals with right triangles and it's work to find the leg length of right triangles for centuries. It's all coming back to you now. And that is Pythagorean's theorem. So Pythagorean's theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now you're thinking, oh yes, I do remember learning that sometime in middle school. So here we're going to use Pythagorean's theorem and we're going to figure out what this missing leg should be. So let's call this, we'll call it A, I'll call this short little leg B, and we'll call the hypotenuse here C. And we'll go ahead and start plugging in these values into our Pythagorean's theorem. So it says quantity A squared, so we don't know. So we're just going to keep that as A squared. We don't have a value for it. B squared is X over two. So let's look at this. Now we have X over two quantity squared, and we know the value of C. C is X. So this is X squared. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna square X over two. So this looks like a lot, but it really isn't because all you're really doing is just multiplying a fraction. So here we have A squared plus, and this is gonna be x over 2 times x over 2. Now you're doing this because you're squaring it and squaring means you multiply by itself. So now I'll look at this and I'll say, okay, well, x times x, that's x squared. So here I have a squared. I'm just bringing that down. x times x is x squared because I multiply across and then 2 times 2 is 4 and this equals x squared. We haven't changed anything. Now, remember, the whole point of this was to figure out what this missing leg over here was where the question mark is. So we're looking for A. So that's the variable we want to isolate. So what I'll do here is I'll say, okay, I need to isolate A squared. So this X squared divided by 4, this has to go. So I'll subtract X squared minus 4 from both sides. X squared divided by 4. Now what I'll do is I'll come down here and I'll say, okay, so a squared should equal x squared minus x squared divided by four. Well, this is weird because now you have a squared equals some number minus a fraction. Well, we've lucky for us, we've been adding and subtracting fractions probably since fifth grade. So this is no problem for us. We know that when we add and subtract fractions, we need common denominators. 
So this needs a denominator of 4. And you remember that old little saying, if you do it to the bottom, you got to do it to the top. That's because you can't just randomly change the value of the denominator of some number. So now I have 4x squared minus x squared all over 4. So this isn't too bad. So here, 4x squared minus x squared gives us 3x squared. And when you subtract fractions, your denominator does not change. So now we have a squared equals 3x squared divided by 4. Well, this is, we're getting really close, but we don't want a squared. We want a. So here, my answer, I have a isolated, but I have a squared. So what I need to do now is get rid of this squared symbol. So to do that, I have to take the square root. So I'll take the square root here. And now I have a equals, and your rule with square roots, whenever you have a fraction, remember you take the square root of the top, 3x squared, and you also take the square root of the bottom. So you can separate this numerator because you have a number and you have variables. So this is the same thing as the square root of 3 times the square root of x squared. And then we know the square root of 4 is 2. Now we can come in here and we know that the square root of x squared is x. So a here should be x times the square root of 3 all over 2. There's our answer. So let's come back up here. So now, no, no longer do we need the question mark. We already know what this is. So let's take our a. Let's give us just a bit of room to write. And we'll call this x times the square root of 3 all over 2. Yay, we're done. But there's an issue here. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at, look at what we wanted. We wanted x, that's the rule, x root 3, and 2x. Look what we have. We have x divided by 2, x, and we have x root 3 divided by 2. Okay, well, that's not, that's not the proof that we're looking for. So what's wrong? We want 2x, we have 1x, we want 1x down here on the bottom, but we have x divided by 2, so we have half of what we need. Here we want x root 3, and we have x root 3 divided by 2. We literally have half of the values that we want. Well, if I want to match the rule, all I have to do now is I can just come in to each value here, and I could double it. Remember, if you do it to 1, you have to do it to all. Now doubling this, let's redraw this triangle. So I'll come down here. There's my 30, 60, 90 triangle. So here this is 30 degrees, here is 60 degrees, and here's my right angle. And here, if I have x root 3 divided by 2 times 2, these 2's here cancel. So now I have x times the square root of 3, x times 2 is 2x, and then down here I have x divided by 2 times 2. So these 2s will cancel, and look, I have the exact same values that I had in the original that I wanted to prove. So that's how these values came about. You took a standard equilateral triangle, you dropped a perpendicular bisector, that gave you your 30, 60, 90 triangle, and it looks like we did a whole lot of math, but really all we did was just Pythagorean's theorem, and then, you know, we multiplied some fractions, and then we just added and subtracted fractions, and we took the square root of a fraction, so yeah, we kind of did do a lot of work, but we were able to prove why this works. Now, what's convenient is that it does not matter what values you plug in here. If I call, let's just, let me show you what I mean. When I say it doesn't matter what values you plug in here, let's say x equals 5. All right? I can now find the value of every other leg. So I know that if this is 5 and you have 60 degrees here, let's just say you wanted the opposite leg. And that's all the information you had. So you didn't know the rule with x root 3. You didn't know the rule with 2x. You just had, oh, here's a 60-degree angle. This leg is x. What are you going to do? And I have 5, and I want to figure out what this hypotenuse is. That is my adjacent leg and my hypotenuse. So here I would just say cosine of 60 degrees equals my adjacent leg over 
Mahapatanus. So I have adjacent leg over hypotenuse. Now, when I solve this, I can just cross multiply. So I have x times cosine 60 equals 5. We want the value of x. So here we just divide and say, okay, well, x has to be 5 divided by cosine of 60. Well, if you type that in on your calculator, make sure you're in degrees. If your calculator is in radians, you're not going to get the same number I get. But 5 divided by cosine 60 is going to be 10 because cosine of 60 is 1 half. And 5 divided by 1 half is 10. Oh, look. That's twice the value of the short leg. And when you do Pythagorean's theorem, so I, if I tried it again and said a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and I plug in 5 as a leg and uh, 10 with C being the hypotenuse. Let's see what that gives us. So let's come. Do I have any room? Let's come over here. We'll come over here and do this. So I have 5 squared plus the unknown leg. We'll call it B squared equals 10 squared. Well, B squared is now going to be 10 squared minus 5 squared. So here, b squared, 100 minus 25, we know is 75. We know now we have to take the square root. So if I broke 75 down, I'd get the square root of 25. That's the largest perfect square that can go into 75. And 3, well, we know the square root of 25. b is 5 root 3. Look at there. x, x root 3, 2x. Right? If you know the value of any leg, you don't even need a calculator now. You can base everything off of the rule. And we know the rule works every time because we just proved it. So that's why the rules are helpful. It's not something extra that your teacher's just like, learn this, you have to learn it. What they're doing is they're showing you a trick with a special kind of triangle where it doesn't matter what values you have. If you know the rule, you don't. You can bypass all the algebra of Pythagorean's theorem. You can just plug your values into the rule, and then you'll get the same answer as the calculator would. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, give it a like, a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can.